All right, so what's going on, everybody? We got 545. It says, determine the magnitude and direction of the anchoring force needed to hold the horizontal elbow and nozzle combination in place. So the atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascals, which is absolute, and the gauge pressure at section one is 100 kilopascals. At section two, the water exits into the atmosphere. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first step, right? Knowns. We are dealing with water. So density of water, that's a thousand thin kilopascals meters. So kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, we got the diameter, cool. So that is 0 0.3 meters. Second diameter is 0 0.16 meters. Um, so area, right, that's just uh, pi r squared. So doing that, we could get the areas you will get 0 0.0707 meters cubed and second area is going to be 0 0.0201 meter cubed what else do we got we got velocities right velocity one they gave it to us two meters per second uh velocity two so this is a mass conservation, so that means, let's go ahead and label this step two. Mass flow rate at the inlet is equal to the mass flow rate at the outlet. Density is constant, so that means Q1 is equal to Q2, right? That means A1V1 is equal to A2V2. We have everything except V2, so if you plug in your numbers, right, a1, A2, V1, you will get 7.03 meters per second. Um, okay, so look, this is kind of the thing um, on this problem. They gave us the gauge pressure at here, which is 100 kilopascals, and the atmospheric pressure is uh, 100 kilopascals. That's an absolute. So that means here... Um, the water at section two, the water exits to the atmosphere. So what this means is that P2 is equal to zero kPa gauge. <clears throat> All right, so now here's the thing. We use gauge because if we use absolute, then we gotta take into account every single pressure pretty much hitting up on this thing, right? Everywhere. So that's the reason we use gauge pressures just um in these problems we don't want to consider any of these acting on the control volume remember because this is our control volume um so that's the reason p2 is zero and it's not 100 this is not 200 so let me go ahead and write that down right here p1 is a hundred a hundred thousand right newtons per meters squared or pascals and this is gauge. And P2 is equal to zero gauge. So you got to understand that. Um, you always use gauge pressures for, for these types of problems. Um, we should be good. So let's go ahead and do the free body diagram. Let's do it right here. FBD, right? So it kind of converges a little bit, right? Ooh, it's a little too big, but whatever. Something like that. Okay, and that's our uh, free body diagram. So we got pressure, right, acting here. One, two, let's do another one. That's the first one. That's the second one, actually. It's point two. So we got uh, that one right there. 
let's go ahead and do this one right uh, velocity it's going this way here v1 it's going this way here v2 this is p1 a1 this is p2 a2 and we got to find a force holding this thing together pretty much so um, let's go ahead and just assume positive and so it's positive fy positive f of x so that is our direction our coordinate system so I don't know in which way these forces act, right? Like I said, if we get a negative number, that just means we assumed the wrong, which is fine. Um, so I think we got everything, right? P2, A2, P1, A1, the velocity, the flow rates. Cool, yeah, we're good. So step four, let's do the y direction first. Sum of the forces in the y is equal to the sum of the linear momentum in the y. So we have f of y, right? So f of y, this one goes in the x direction, not in an angle, so just uh, there's no y component. Same for this one, so that's all we got on this side. And the linear momentum goes in the negative x, positive x, no angle, so this is zero. So that's f of y right there. Now step now we do it in the X. Let's see. Right? So we got this one in the X direction, this one in the X. So we got P1A1 plus P2A2. We assume the positive F of X. So plus FX equals only those three and then these equals these two so we got density area of one now it's an inlet so it's negative v1 times it's going in the positive direction so it's v1 plus density of water times area of two this is an outlet so this is a positive v2 it's going in the negative x direction so negative v2 there you go um p2 remember it's gauge pressure so it's zero um that's the only thing we could cancel out so let's plug in numbers uh, a thousand newtons per meter newtons per meter squared times area which is 0 0.0707 meter squared that's gonna give you a newton plus fx equals a thousand right density of water times a1 that is 0 0.0707 times v1 which is two meters per second cool so negative two right then positive two plus a thousand Density A2 is 0 0.0201 times the velocities, 7.03, and then negative 7.03. So that's what the equation looks like. So multiply these out, you will get 70, 70 plus fx equals next term is negative 282.8 minus right this makes it a negative this makes it a negative so two negatives minus 993.4 that means your f of x is negative 8346.2 newtons we assumed it in the positive, so like this. Or you could also write f of x equals positive 8346.2 newtons in the negative x direction. So the, both those answers are right. Again, just uh, make sure you're consistent with these uh, signs. 
and you'll be all right. But yeah, um, the big takeaway in this problem is, uh, what was it, the, the gauge thing. So always use gauge pressures. If you use absolute, you gotta take into account the forces acting here and all that. And we're not trying to deal with that, but that's how you solve this one.